Hi, I'm Suzanne Dwyer, and I'm the Director of Technology for the District. Hi, I'm Sue Murphy, and I'm Chief Information Officer for the District. And um, in reading this chapter, in the chapter, the rest of the second tale, is where my favorite line, or favorite lines of the book so far are. It's when the yew tree, also the monster, um, says, Belief is half of all healing. Belief in the cure, belief in the future that awaits. And I just, I love that line because I think it's so true, especially when you have somebody who's not well in your family. Like it really is how much you believe in them and how much they believe in themselves that, that leads to a, a better life and a quality of life for yes. them. Yes, never give up, right? never give up. So my favorite part of the same chapter, the rest of the second tale, is when Connor yells at the yew tree. You would have let yourself be killed, and the yew tree replied, I am far more than just one tree, the monster said, but yes, I would have let the yew tree be chopped down. It would have saved Parson's daughter and many, many others besides. I like that because it shows selflessness, that he would give himself up to help others, and that's very important in life, and I think it's a very good lesson. You know what I thought was really interesting about that? What? Was that he referred to, the yew tree referred to himself in the third person. Yes, yes. Right? Yes. That, that was, kind of threw me when I read it. I think it's a very, very strong message, this whole chapter, in never giving up, and yet always think about others and not being selfish. And that is such a huge message. I don't think Connor was aware that he was destroying Grandma's sitting room. I, I really, you know, when you get that um, emotional, you know, sometimes you're really just not aware of all of the things that you're doing, and he just seems so stunned afterwards. I think I agree. I 100% agree. I think his, his father had just told him he had no place for him to be with him. He knew his mother was passing and his grandmother. He didn't get along with her very well, but he wanted to get along with her. And I think it all just came together and he just, like, not blacked out, but he just went into a zone. And I think he didn't realize what he was doing because he felt so guilty when he woke up. Right. But still, do you think that he knew? I don't think he knew. No, I, I mean about the tree. Like he's really seeing this tree. Now, I didn't finish the book. I think, I think he's using the tree because he has no real friends. And I think he's using the tree as his friend, as a sounding board for somebody to talk to him because he's really talking to himself. But he brings up the tree. And the tree is trying to reason with him and teach him lessons. And I think that's his subconscious because he really had nobody to talk to. But he was choosing not to talk to anybody, too. Absolutely, and the right? tree was teaching him that lesson as well. How would I have rewritten this? Um, it would have been really difficult for me to rewrite something like this. You know, when I look at it from my own perspective, having kind of gone through this at a little bit older than Connor, I think you're right. I think, you know, um, having someone written in that was really just there for him. And I know that the yew tree, but somebody real, um, is almost somewhat more realistic. Even as a person who doesn't like to share all that much mm -hmm. with other people, right. there's still always someone, like a real someone. So maybe, I think I might agree with you, maybe someone. How would I have written it differently? Um, I just, I think I would like him to have one person in his life that he could turn to that would give him a hug and some comfort. I think that um, it's, it's a very sad story, but I think in the end he learns many good lessons and it will help him get through the tough times ahead. I really, I don't... It's hard. It, that's a really hard thing. You know, when I look at it from my own perspective, I, I agree with you. You know what my biggest surprise was? What? He's from England. Yes. <laughs> yes. That totally shocked me. I was not expecting that yes. at all. He's from England. He's from England. What surprised me about the book? I mean, I, I, we we're only supposed to talk about these chapters. Um, what surprised me about the book was that 
he was so, so sad. And he really just wanted his mom to be okay. And he was struggling with accepting the fact that sometimes the doctors can't fix things. And that, I think that was his whole struggle in this whole chapter, was that he was just getting hit from all angles and he just kind of lost it. And it was just sad to me that he didn't have anybody to just give him a hug. And he had to work it out himself, but he was strong enough to do that. And he was strong enough to teach himself very important lessons, which is also very, very good. And I think that's what really made this book a success. I think when I think about these chapters, I think um, his belief in, him, in himself, you know, sometimes you just forget like how strong you really are Absolutely. until something Absolutely. like this happens. Mm -hmm. And you see, you know, and it's okay to feel, you know, and that whole destruction scene. That's okay. Right? Let it out. He was bottling everything up so tightly and then just to, for him to, to go that far and then to feel that bad, but to still be okay. But it calmed him because then he tried him. to clean up well, the room and he could think, you know, look at things more in a different perspective and he could be more accepting as to what was going on around him. So I think it was a good release. Oh, it was his definitely a good up. release. But I did feel bad about the clock. Oh, so sad. Oh, the clock. Yeah. I did really feel bad about the clock. Yeah, that was kind of sad. But I don't know what happens. I know it's big in the story, but I don't know what happens. But I... How about when his grandma came in? Oh, I didn't get that. You didn't read the... Yes, you did. The, the no. Read the, no. Oh, wait till you see what the grandma does when she comes home. No. Ooh, that's good. But the clock... Keep reading. Yep. Yeah. Keep I reading. <laughs> A monster helps. Oh. You like that? I kind of do. See? I should but be But does give it away? No, not at all. Um... How about a monster's insight? I was going to say a monster inside. A monster inside. Mm, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Don't eat the berries. Don't eat the berries? <laughs> don't bring the berries in the house. <laughs> How funny. I didn't know all that stuff about a yew tree either. Yes. Like it was, all the yes, healing properties all the heal, yes. of the yew tree. So we, have to, we should go find a yew tree. We should. Become we should. chemists. Maybe there's one on the grounds. Maybe we should plant one on the grounds. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we taping? Yes. My real name? Yeah, your real name. <laughs> no, you're like, so, your like, alter ego okay. name. <laughs> Hi, I'm Penny Alice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Penelope Sunshine. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Suzanne. Oh, if I almost said <laughs> Suzanne Murphy. <laughs> you know what? You might not want to ask us this question. <laughs> And then... <laughs> it's my phone. <laughs> oh my Should God. Should we just wait? Should I shut it off? <laughs>